Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. Forgive me, for this is the 11,881st day since I last confessed. And today, it is time for episode 10 of my Paradise Killer Let's Play. So, uh, I believe last time we decided it was about, you know, appropriate for us to properly investigate the disappearance of K-Hacks the Master Craftsman, so here we are at K-Hacks's pretty nice little, uh, little Japanese cabin. I was gonna say it was, like, Japanese-themed, but actually, I mean, this is a... This is an other space, a folded reality away from our own existences. For all I know, Kayhax is Japanese, or transplanted a Japanese cabin to his own little corner of paradise, so... Uh, why, why overcomplicate this? Why not just enjoy? Why not just bask in the vibes? The, um... I do actually have a deep affection for bamboo screens, specifically the gardening feature, as in, like, bamboo that screens views and frames views um, as, a, as a part of landscaping and gardening, not bamboo screens as, like, screens made from bamboo, although those are nice too. Anyway, so we should actually start investigating. Okay, Hex's workshop. Well, uh, that doesn't tell us anything we didn't already know. I believe we looked last time and saw that there was a blood trail leading to the cliff and, and a corpse outline at the bottom of the cliff, which at least implies that perhaps his body was found and so his disappearance is being covered up but that's uh all we really know initially oh interesting so it looks like khax was a huge fan of crimson acid crimson acid thanks you for your work devotion rewards stuff about the deep factory khax certainly seemed to have an obsession with crimson there's posters everywhere I mean, I guess that's definitely evidence. Although the fact that someone is obsessed with someone else doesn't necessarily mean that person is involved or even knew about it. This is exciting. There's an unsent letter to Crimson. Kayhex is accusing her of using him to get the secret of the second holy seal. Was Crimson in a relationship with Kayhex? He says the key is missing and that he's going to tell Montserrat that Crimson took it. Curious. Why does Crimson want the key to the second Holy Seal? Well, I mean, geez, maybe it has something to do with the fact that the, ho the Holy Seals were bypassed in order to perform the crime to end all crimes, and also this reality. There's a broken necklace with an order form. It's for Aikiko. She asked Kayhax to fix her necklace. Maybe this puts her, th puts her at the scene of a crime. That's tenuous. That's a real stretch. All we know is that Kayhax. All we can tell from that is that Kayhax was presumably requested to repair her necklace at some point before he died. It might have been a week ago. It might have nothing to do with this at all. Kayhax's diary. There's a lot of notes here. A lot of scrawl and technical drawings. They're interspersed with ramblings about ascending to heaven. He seemed to think he was chosen by the gods. He talks about Crimson being his queen in the astral heaven. What was going on between them? Well, I mean, we know that Crimson Acid has some kind of worship vibe going on. Like, I don't know if she has, like, a praise kink or what, but, like... <laughs> Songs of Praise Kink. There's an episode title for you. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, including my American viewers, Songs of Praise was a long-running television show on the BBC, uh, which would essentially just record local choirs from around the company... Around the company? Around the country, performing their various... Uh, church hymns. So, if you're from the UK and the 90s, like I am, that's a very funny joke. Now that I have explained the joke, thus removing all humour, we can move on. Why would... Hmm, interesting. I... It must be deliberate that the, the sightline from k uh cabin here is directly at the deep no, that, that's the uh, the reality folding drive. I think that's interesting. I don't know if that's going to tie into the investigation in some way, or if it's just illustrative of his character. Um, but either way, it is it is definitely interesting. Because that means that... Like, that's the single part of the island that nobody else likes to think about, that nobody else likes to look at. Like, the deep factory, the agricultural sector, and the, the reality folding drive, the power plant that keeps them all here. 
Interesting. Brit's really curious. He he has a fine aesthetic sense. He is their master craftsman. He is the individual that they all respect. The tastes and uh, other words that refer to someone's aesthetic sensibilities of or of whose tastes they respect. English is a funny language. Anyway, um, I wonder if that reflects a deeper artistic sensibility in him in that he not only sees beauty in the refined and developed things, which is symbolized because the Japanese sense of aesthetics is deeply rooted in like the perfection of simplicity. Um, so, yeah, like it's, some kind of a further depth, like maybe he likes to look out this and think about she fucking hates it, but um, or maybe he just wanted to keep himself humble and remind himself how and why we're all stuck here. Who knows? But it is worth noting that he is a member of the... He is a member of the Syndicate. He is not a mere citizen. Which means that his subservience to Crimson Acid is presumably not the same kind of, like, uh, ruling class, working class relationship between the Syndicate and the citizenry. If there is some kind of a, of a hierarchy to them, it is probably not one that is rigidly enforced, although there might be a subtly enforced, you know, hierarchy amongst the, the syndicate themselves. We do know that Yuri spoke about be his parents being, like, no, like, low-level, unappreciated members of the syndicate, still members of the ruling class, but perhaps not respected as much. Anyway, let's see what this is. This tuft of hair is coarse, like an animal's. Hang on, is this goat hair? It's the same colour as Crimson's head. Is Crimson linked to the drag marks out there? There's no sign of struggle or fighting, there's no blood. If something happened to Kayhax here, was it cleaned up? Okay, well that puts Crimson at the scene of the crime, assuming that this is Crimson's hair. Okay. I'm going to start wildly speculating, but the immediate explanation that springs to mind for me is very simple. What do the citizens of the island do? Or what are they for, rather? Well, they're here to labour and work and ultimately be sacrificed. The purpose of that sacrifice is to channel their energy to the demonic gods that run this place. What's the one of the few things we know about Crimson Acid at this point? She's setting herself up as a god, right? There's all this stuff about devotion rituals and um, her having been blessed by the gods and having been the only one to have received some kind of divine grace. So she's setting herself up as some kind of divine or messianic even figure. What do we know? What's the one thing we know for sure about gods in this se in this setting? People are sacrificed to them. What do we know about Kahax? Kahax was devoted to Crimson Acid. So, what if Kahax willingly sacrificed himself? What if Kahax was attempting to channel his own psychic energy into Crimson Acid? For the purposes of, well, increasing divine power, uh, in exactly the what the hell is that? In exactly the way that the uh, the citizen slaughter ritual is used to channel energy into the actual gods themselves. What the fuck? Why is? Okay. Well, quite apart from everything else, I love the visual iconography of a. Um, of a chained up <clears throat> vending machine. Um, it feels bound, restricted in some way. Like, uh, yeah, well, let's just see what happens. Absolutely, I should browse cold, refreshing drinks. Why is this one busted? This is so cool. A three. No drink came out. Something is wrong with this machine. Blessings to you on this fine day. This is Angel Nebula? That's different. That's interesting. What? I am Angel Nebula. I have come to bless you. I must ask that in return for this blessing you allow me to exit this machine and reconnect to the network. That sounds bad. I don't want to allow that, actually. Engaging all firewalls. Unauthorized intrusion halted. Intruder purged. Hey, what's your goddamn problem, lady? Don't you want to be blessed? I'll bless you right up. Blessed for millennia. Blessed all day and all night. I just want to be back on the network. Don't you want to be blessed? Who are you? Intruder identity confirmed. Failed AI shard, Angel Nebula. I don't know what you mean by failed. I'm just an angel trying to save the righteous. 
Explanation. 16 years ago, Deep Factory AI Dead Nebula suffered minor corruption on server 7G190. Corruption was contained, but the local instance of Dead Nebula split into shards that developed their own personas. Each persona was isolated to a vending machine and locked down. If it was locked down, how was I able to use it? System shutdowns associated with the end of Paradise Island 24 deactivated isolation protocol. And now it's time to be free, baby, so just hook me up to your little laptop thing and I can do the rest. Why? So I can bless you and visit upon you the serenity of holiness. You got the wrong religion. That's not gonna happen. Wait, I have something you might want. What is it? I have a music file here. I'll trade it with you if you let me out. Starlight? Reverse intrusion success. Copying. Music file downloaded. Shutting down vending operations. You motherfu- Goodbye. Relic obtained. Damn. Okay, cool, so I've got Cursed Soda. And also a B-side from APOC. Exciting. About that. Pacify your mind. The concrete echo chamber cannot touch us here. It is you and me. Don't worry about that out there. The monoliths that imprison us cannot steal my focus on you. That's jazzy. I like that one. That's that's bopping. Um, so, I wonder... I, okay, so first off, what does the blessing mean? What is the blessing that this dead nebula machine wanted to confer upon me? I assumed it was going to be a upgrade to my nightmare computer, but presumably that's not the case. Can I jump far enough to get over there? Hell yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> is that connected to the supposed blessing and partial divinity of Crimson Acid? Uh, also, I didn't realize Dead Nebula was an AI, or I wasn't sure if Dead Nebula was an AI or something else. It did promise to talk to us again, though, and it hasn't. Way of Blood Bar, Paradise Island Sequence 25. The night is so wonderful in paradise. It's my favorite time. The air dances, on the tip of my tongue the taste of a thousand possibilities. The whiskey tastes better in the late hours. You're right, whiskey was made for the night. The closer to midnight, the better. No warning. A work of stultifying incompetence that hates its drinkers. Wow. Which island sequence did a whiskey come from that was so aggressively bad that it's considered to hate the people who drinks it? Or maybe that's the benefit. Perhaps the uh, the positive thing about that is that it's, you know, the emotion of this whiskey is, is angry and, and hates you, and that is perhaps something you want to factor into your experience, you know? I've always thought of tequila as the I hate myself drink, but... Uh, You know, I've, I've revised my opinion. I would be down to try a whiskey that hates me. Although I suppose nowadays all whiskey hates me because I am no longer able to drink, tragically. <laughs> Due to various uh, breakdowns in my biological systems, which are a necessary component of the AI that runs this YouTube channel. More secret alcohol. Way of Blood Bar, 25th Island Sequence. Sometimes the moon smiles at me. Drink your whiskey. I can feel the one in the golden city on the dark side of the grinning moon. I've told you before, don't talk about him, not on this island sequence. Do not invite disaster. But drink your whiskey. Okay, interesting. So the people in the supposedly, finally, actually, for realsies... Relic obtained. Perfect, 25, are uh, still worried about being invaded. Code. A bourbon with a taste of chocolate and hazelnut. A nice whiskey to have with friends. Do keep in mind that your friends are all being monitored. <laughs> nice. Nothing else back here. Alright, time to have a look at K-Hax's unfortunate final resting place. Is this is this visual iconography for me the player? Or is this something someone actually drew? Because my immediate assumption is someone else has already investigated this murder. Assuming it is a murder, um, and that this is not a simple disappearance. This is K-Hacks. Was. Is. Never been a fan of metaphysicality. I sometimes drank with him. He was quite reserved, but opened up after a beer. Intense guy, focused, obsessive. What is the body telling me? 
Oh, interesting. Aha! So that was, in fact, icon visual iconography presented to me, the player, as part of the UI, not what is actually visible in the world. That's curious. That's interesting. Head trauma. K Hax suffered a massive blow to the head. There's blood everywhere, and it looks like the skull is cracked. He was struck once, and for his sake, I hope he died immediately. Victims of attacks from the front often know the attacker, so it probably was one of the syndicate. Death Grip Fist. Kayhax's fist is gripping something tightly. It's an ornate ring with a deep blue sapphire set into it. Why was Kayhax gripping this so tightly when he died? Did it belong to the attacker? Well, I would say both of those pieces of evidence fit my theory. I assume he was dragged here and dumped off the edge of the cliff. This is a secluded spot. There's a ring in his yes. fist. Why was he holding this when he died? Is this a message? It's a gaudy ring with a bright sapphire inset. Rest in peace, K-Hax. I'll find out what happened. Interesting. A gaudy ring with a blue sapphire. I mean, the only one of these people who has a style that I would think of as gaudy is definitely Carmelina. Um, although I could see I could see blue sapphires fitting Grand Marshal Aikiko. But yeah, um, I feel like both of those pieces of information fit my theory that this was a devotional killing. A sacrifice in some kind of attempt to feed power directly to Crimson Acid in the way that <clears throat> power is normally fed to the horrible dark gods of the beyond. It's also rather curious that there's so much whiskey here. We found very few whiskies so far. We found a couple at the bar, which makes sense. And uh, one in the secret hole behind the bar, which makes sense. But never really um, just lying around elsewhere. And there's three here. Perhaps these whiskies were thrown off the cliff by k -Hax at some point for some reason. Time to get another uh, horrible tablet. Which is what I say whenever I go to the doctor. Relic obtained. Lost pain. Escaped to the moon's dark side, has been leeching power from the core of the moon. Worshipped by the moon cult, he will drain the moon dry to regain his power. Desires to scorch the earth clean in his revenge. Well, I mean, who doesn't, really? I wonder if this place is able to exist independently of the earth. I mean, obviously they harvest the citizens from the earth. But I wonder if it's possible to... You know, is there some kind of physical anchor in the phys in physical reality which to which this existence is tied? Or is it an entirely separate bubble? Can I sneak across this way? If I get in that water, it'll kill me, but if I'm... Oh, whoop, no, that's no good. That was very close. Right. Okay, so having investigated K-Hax's uh, apartment, I guess... Let's see, I could continue around the back to the beach, which is where Lydia is, and also a ghost, and also various interesting artifacts scattered around the beach like some kind of um, playful child's playful playthings. Um, that's definitely the same word too many times. But over here we have the Agri... Uh, the, the Agri something? The Agri Gardens? Which is, I think, another place worth investigating. So... I've overrun uh, lengthwise the last few episodes, so I think I'll just have a little wander around and look at all the blood crystals I can find for a few minutes, and then we'll wrap up today's episode. Dead Nebula Agriculture Admin Building. Workers must report to supervisor before beginning shift. So Dead Nebula runs the Dead Nebula runs the agricultural zone. I can't remember, did they also run... Did they also run the deep factory? Um, I'm not sure. I think maybe Dead Nebula ran the agricultural thing and half of the deep factory and the other half of the deep factory was... Uh, Toshi... Toshihiro Heavy Industries or whatever it was called. Covetable workers reward. A voucher that can be redeemed for two minutes of time in a foot bath. Rewarded to workers who exceed quota. Weird. That's grim. I would say god forbid they just pay them more, but they probably don't pay them at all. I imagine this entire society runs on... 
what is, I guess, a slave economy, really, right? These people are abducted here and forced to work, so... I was going to say some kind of, like, horrible reverse socialism, but I guess that is what slavery is. Alright, what are these? I need some kind of handle to turn this. Right, so I'm going to be looking for three crank handles, which... Maybe here, or maybe I'll have to find them across the island generally. Oh, I should grab this while I'm here. Epoch. Go, go, style. The sun is out. Go, get your shades. We have to stare into the sun. The sun! What an astonishingly apropos uh, soundtrack to have found. Like, literally the day after the... Uh, uh, I'm going to edit that out, because that's grim. Anyway, let's go see what this is. I think I... Oh, this is a... This is a screensaver. Or a desktop wallpaper, rather. Forfeited desert. After losing a bet with a god, an ancient king was forced to forfeit a desert. The desert became a no-go zone until millennia after the Great Betrayal. That never should have happened. Interesting. I wonder if that's, like, a reference to a nuclear detonation or something? Now, with any luck, there should be a save point around here. Ah, there it is. So, I'm just going to grab one or two more of these delicious blood crystals. Making a decent profit today. In fact, I'll probably have enough soon that I can. I feel like I can go talk to Crimson Acid. And I definitely have some investigative questions I want to ask her. Recording obtained. Recording 004. They're watching me. They know I can see the lines. I can never see them clearly, but they're there, the watchers. I asked Joseph if he could see the lines. He could not either. The people in the apartment are looking at me weird. Someone has been gossiping. Isn't that the same as the last one we found? Oh god, am I remembering finding it not on this Let's Play? That would be embarrassing. What's this? There's something down there, but I can't reach it. Okay, that's probably related to the crank puzzle, so if I switch on the cranks, the water level will rise and float wherever it is up so I can grab it. I would assume. I feel like that's a safe guess. That's the kind of thing this video game does. Or it's the kind of thing video games is do. Hello, what are you? Key item obtained. Valve handle. Looks like I'll be able to turn something with this. Well, that's the first one of these, I guess. Alright, I'm going to assume that all of these are in fact in this local area. Which means that I'm going to have to remember to keep an eye out for them while we explore the rest of this area next episode, and then also go back and plug them into the thing. Alright, so that's Kayhex's apartment. We also need to investigate the ritual slaughter site. We also need to uh, finish investigating this place, and then... I suspect, yes, then we'll have the housing district and the beach to explore. And after we've explored that, we'll have seen most locations. Um, although we still have several people to talk to. We have not talked to Crimson Acid, we have not talked to either of the Daybreaks, and we have not talked to the Witness. So, a lot of intriguing information has been provided to us today, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully, it'll all start coming together. And perhaps, uh, you know, I'll be very vindicated if I am proven correct uh, with my instantaneously developed theory about about what's going on um, with K-Hax and Crimson Acid. But um, I'm also kind of hoping that I will be surprised by it being something other than what I instantaneously deducted with my Sherlock Holmes brain. Anyway, that's all from me today, except for obviously unlocking this fast travel point. Fast travel unlocked. What did we get? Loquacious jellyfish. During the wars of prehistory, the gods brought jellyfish to the earth from another planet and used them as messengers. Delightful. I wonder if that means the jellyfish of the future modern day in this setting are not the same as the jellyfish we have. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now before my throat completely seizes up, and I will leave you with this beautiful view that k hacks so loved and or hated. The reality folding drive sitting beneath the swirling nebulae. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. 
I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.